Hola amigos, how are you guys? Hi, I am Somvir and welcome to my channel Mechanic Dude. So before we start, I would like to share something about myself. I am a mechanical engineer by qualification. My inspiration comes from Tony Stark, aka Iron Man. I love how he creates stuff on his own. He inspires me to learn and build something new every day. So you will see me working on different mechanical projects as well as coding projects. I dream of building an AI that is similar to Jarvis, which Tony Stark had. So I started learning coding about seven to eight months ago, and this lockdown provided me a perfect chance to enhance my skills and learn something new. So today. I'm going to guide you through my first program that I wrote. This program uses deep learning algorithms to classify sentences as positive sentiment or negative sentiment. Let's have a look. So, in this video, we are going to use the concept of NLP to create a machine learning model so that the sentiment of the tweet can be analyzed. This finalized machine learning model will be able to determine the positive or negative sentiment of a text. This video will only focus on building the model and by the end of this video, we will have a basic idea of sentiment analysis. In this model, we are going to use LSTM long short term memory approach of RNN to build this model. We are pre-assuming that you have some basic knowledge about TensorFlow, Deep Learning, RNN and LSTM before we start this video. So before building the model, let's understand how words are interpreted by the machine. As we all know, computer cannot understand the input directly given by humans or in a text form. So it uses tokenizer to convert the string into integers. The process of taking out tokens out of the sentence is, co is called tokenizing. Tokens basically mean the individual words in the sentence. For example, if we have a sentence, I love my cat, then we will have four tokens as I love my and cat. The tokenizer then converts these tokens into sequences of these extracted tokens into integers and each word is given its individual word index. For example, the tokens we have I love my cat and I have a cat and then the sequence of these two sentences will be 1, 2, 3, 4 and 1, 5, 6, 4. After this process, padding is done, meaning if the two sequences are there and they are of unequal length, they are not of same length, then zero is added so that all the sequences have same length. So before moving forward, let's look how our model will look like. In this model, we are using the Keras functional APIs for building our model. There are different approach on building models and each and every approach is correct. It's just that I'm using different ones. First, we will give input of shape T where t is the sequence of length then we add one embedding layer where we will give two parameters v and d here v is the vocab size that will be extracted using the tokenizer from our input d gives the dimension of the embedding layer so next layer we are using is lstm with m parameter m gives the dimension of the lstm layer after this layer, we are using global max pooling layer. Basically, what global max pooling layer does is it downsamples the input so that it is easy to take the desired output. At the last, we will use dense layer with A classes and sigmoid as an activation. We are using sigmoid because we are doing a bi binary classification, so it is conventional to use sigmoid in binary classification. 
So next we are going to see the workflow of the model. One of the best thing about machine learning models is that every model almost every time follows the same steps. These steps are importing the required modules, loading the data set, performing pre-processing on the data, build our model, evaluate the model and finally perform the prediction. This video is going to walk you through a prepared collab notebook. The final prepared file will be available on GitHub and the link will be given in the description. The dataset we are using will have two columns, one with the tweet text and another with the sentiment value 0 or 1. One is for positive and 0 is for negative. Here we have dataset on our Google Drive. So we import drive from google.colab and use the mount function to mount our drive with the file location as slash content slash drive slash. If we run this, it will send an authorization code on your email and you can copy paste the code using the link given in the snippet. And if we run it, we will get the link. When we click on this link, it will ask you to sign in your account. allow the process and then you can copy the code from here and if you paste it and press enter you will get a message as mounted at the specified drive location now moving on to next step the next step will be importing libraries and modules we import tensorflow as tf pandas as pd numpy as np matplotlib.pyplot as plt the next step is reading the data. We are using pandas read csv function to read in the data in the data frame df. Here we also use encoding is equal to let, let in 1 so that we can read the data. We check the data of top 10 rows. Here as we can see we have one extra column of item id so we drop it using the drop function and if we check again when we only have required columns sentiment and sentiment text so the next step will be verifying the values in the sentiment like if we have some another or what cleaning is required in this column so if we check we only have one and zero so no cleaning is required in this and next thing is cleaning the sentiment text we have. So we will import RE which is regular expressions and we will define a function which will take input a text and we will use regular expressions function sub which means substitute. So what it will do is it will find some specific patterns of the text and it will replace it with the blank text and finally it will return text the clean one then we apply the function on the sentiment text in the data frame using dot apply text cleaning and if we check we can see that the data is almost completely cleaned the next thing is splitting the data into training and testing set so that it will help in our evaluation of model for the split i am importing train test split from sklearn.model selection we split the sentiment text into x train and x test and sentiment in y train and y test if we check the splitted data we can see that the text is this and for this sentiment is 0 now as our text is clean we will convert these strings into integers and we will take help of tokenizer so we will import tokenizer from tensorflow.keras.preprocessing.text and also pad sequences from preprocessing.sequence the first step in tokenization is instantiating the tokenizer for instantiation 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल यूज मैक्सिमम वो कैब इज इक्वल टू सम नंबर सम बिग नंबर सो देट और वो कैब कैन बी इंक्लूडेड अंडर दिस नंबर देन वी इंस्टेंशिएट द टोकनाइजर यूजिंग द मैक्स वो कैब वी जस्ट डिफाइन एंड वी विल फिट दिस ऑन आर इनपुट डेटा दैट इज एक्सट्रेन the next step is to check the word index or the length of uh, vocab we have so if we use the word index of into the tokenizer we will get the word and its index and if we want to know the uh, vocab size we can use length function length word index so that we can get the complete vocab size and if we print it out we can see that the vocab is of this value now we have the uh, integer value of the data set now we need to convert them into sequences so uh, we will use text to sequences to convert the training and test data into sequences and if we print out the sequences we can see that they are of different length so we will use padding first we will add the training data set with padded sequences and the shape as we can as we want the shape of every sequence to be similar so we define p which will hold the value of the shape and uh, we can see that the training sequence is of length 141 now we need to pad the test sequences here we will use the same function pad sequences and we will use a, another parameter max length is equal to t because just now we defined t as the shape of sequence length so we will use t so that our test data set is also of the same shape as train data set If we print it out, we can now confirm that the length of test sequence is also 141, which is similar to training sequence. Now, next step is to build the model. For this, we will use the functional APIs of Keras, and for that, we need to import some layers and model. The layers which are used in this are input, tens, embedding, LSTM, and global max polling one day. We import model from Keras dot models to in initiate the model. Here D is used to give the dimension of embedding layer and M gives the dimension of LSTM layer. We provide the input layer with shape T. We use embedding layer with V plus one D. Here we are using V plus one because the word index starts from one, not zero. So if the final index is V, then the length of the sequence will be V plus one. So we are using V plus one. Then we use LSTM layer with M. and here we are also using return sequences is equal to true we provide one global max polling layer one dense layer with 32 neurons and we are using activation clelio then finally we use dense layer with one class because we are finding the probability of the sentiment to be negative or positive and as this is a binary classification we are using sigmoid activation now we are giving the input and output to the model so that our model can be initiated now next is compiling the model we are using adam optimizer binary cross entropy loss as this is a binary classification and accuracy as matrix now we fit the model on our padded train sequence and by se by train we will use the validation data as padded test sequence and by test and we will run it for two epochs it will take a lot of time depending on the speed of your processor what run time you are using so i am using two epochs in two epochs only i can see that we get 81% validation accuracy and 83% accuracy now next step is to evaluate the model in evaluating the model we know that model dot fit function returns an object that contains the data from training process so we use pyplot to plot the loss validation loss in a graph as we can see the loss is decreasing but validation loss is almost constant which is not bad for our model next we plot the accuracy and in the graph also we can see that the accuracy is increasing but our validation accuracy is not increasing at a large scale but it is still increasing Now the last step is to predict the sentiment of a given text. So for that we define one function predict sentiment which uses text as an input. This input is given from the user and internally it will convert this text into sequence. It will pad the sequence so that it will be 
with the same sequence length of the training data then we use model.predict and we use round so that we can get the integer value of the prediction as we know if our prediction is 1 we have a positive sentiment and if our sentiment is 0 we have negative sentiment so here I am using a sentence for example I feel happy so if we give this input to predict sentiment function it will provide result and result in this case is it is a positive sentiment and we can see that the sentence is positive indeed the final stage will be saving the model as we have completely trained the model so we can save this model using model.save so that we can use this in the future applications and this model.save will create htf file for our model thank you guys for watching my video if you loved watching it you can like it and please subscribe to my channel for future updates thank you mm -hmm.